video from HSTV and in today's video as you can see by the video title I'm going to be telling you guys why I've actually stopped taking notes at medical school. I think this is quite a big moment on the channel actually because we've done a lot of note taking, a lot of the videos that have done really well on the channel have been all about note taking, you know I've reviewed so many note taking apps on Android and we love the Tab S7 Plus as well. But now, in my fourth year of medical school, going into my fifth year now, um, I just do not think it's worth it anymore. For you to understand why I've stopped taking the notes, we have to go back to about almost a year actually. When I started fourth year of medical school, I was going in with the same study techniques that I used in year one, year two, and then in my intercalation year as well. Now, the problem that I faced during my first semester or fourth year was not only was it difficult to manage placement and studying but actually the actual workload of uh, knowledge uh, that I had to cover was a lot, uh, a lot more than what I was used to. Um, I'm talking like this was over 240 conditions that I had to nail down, um, the causes for, the presentations for, the investigations, the managements and then you know you have all these exceptions that come with things as well with drug side effects and age groups and there's just a lot of things uh, that you just don't realise when you're in year one and two and in your preclinical years. So. When I went in with the same technique and I was watching the university lectures and then I actually switched from doing handwritten notes to typed notes in the semester one as well. So that was one little change that I made. Um, I switched over to Notion, just taking some typed notes from the lectures I was watching. When it got to the December mock exam, um, I didn't do as well as I wanted to at all actually and I just felt my entire semester one was very chaotic, it was hectic and looking back there was a lot of things that I needed to change. So came semester two and I became determined to try and learn from my mistakes in semester one and you know it just goes to show that actually medical school is a journey, it is a lifelong learning journey, you will make changes, you'll make mistakes, you'll learn from those mistakes and actually you come out being a more efficient, more productive learner, it's part of your personal development. So definitely don't be disheartened if this happens to you as well but I'm here to share my experience to try and save you from some of those pitfalls if possible. So semester two came along and I realised that when I was note taking, all I was doing was copying information from one place to another, from lecture slides into Notion and you know what, in an ideal world, if I had all the time in the world um, to learn medicine, I would probably create my own database of notes that I could refer to, you know, I definitely agree that stuff that you write with your own hands and you write, um, you know, whether it's handwritten or typed, it does go in better, you do process it a bit better and um, when it comes to kind of looking up things you'll know exactly where to go because you've written it. However, one of the dangers with this style of note taking is that you are likely to zone out and especially when you have so much information thrown at you, um, it's very common to just start copying things and at medical school this is not an efficient way to learn and this kind of method will ultimately lead you to failure, you will struggle and you know studying will become a lot more challenging. So um, I turned my head more towards the active ways of revising. I said to myself at the start of semester two that I need to treat every day as if I'm revising for an exam. It's just a difference in mindset to be honest with you. Um, in semester one uh, I, it was all about yeah I'm going to do the note taking but then actually I just didn't have any time left to properly revise the material or go over it again. So at the start of semester two I said actually every single day is going to be like I'm revising material. I'm going to actively try and recall it. I'm going to actively learn it so that if someone's testing me on it I'm able to actually regurgitate that information rather than oh yeah I wrote notes about this and then actually that's not helpful for your knowledge exam at all. 
So what I started to do is set myself some goals, again something I didn't do in semester one. Semester one, I was almost like, where do I even begin revising, right? But then in semester two, I said to myself, I want to have covered the entire course by like February time. And that gives me another good two or three months to go over things again. So what I did is I said that I'd cover six conditions every day. Now I'm saying six, but actually for anybody watching this, I just made this uh, based on a simple calculation dependent on the conditions that I wanted to cover. And you know, at Edinburgh Medical School, we had about like 230-ish, I think. I just divided that by the number of weeks that I wanted to cover the entire course by and then through that calculation I came up with a plan that I'm going to cover six conditions every day. That way it gives me a bit more of a goal and I'm a very goal oriented person so I knew that if I'm setting myself that goal I will not go to bed until that goal is complete so it's kind of a good motivation for me. And the way I'm going to go through each condition is rather than just watching the university lectures which to be honest at some points I felt weren't as useful actually I would do some more high yield kind of content. So watching um, like Ninja Nerd on YouTube, he is an absolute superstar, really, really good teacher. Even though he's American, it works for the UK syllabus as well. So if there's a certain topic that I was really struggling with, then I definitely go to Ninja Nerd to explain that. Secondly, PassMed, using the high yield textbook on PassMed really helped me to actually uh, condense all that knowledge down to what I really needed to know for my exams. Now, the thing is, a lot of you might watch this video and think that uh, I'm a very exam orientated person or that I'm not going through stuff in as much depth as I should be. Um, guys, the truth about medical school is exams are a thing and in order to progress, you have to sit those exams. Ultimately, the thing that's going to make you a good doctor is your passion and that stuff that you do outside of medicine, um, what you try and gain on placement and how you take initiative in those activities. But when it comes to the knowledge part at medical school, unfortunately, it does come down to just learning material and making sure you're able to recall that information on the day of your exam. It's just the way medical school is um, made in the UK at least, and I think over the all over the world as well. And perhaps that's something we need to change, but for now, that's the methods that work. So, yeah. And then on PassMed as well, you have questions. Questions are so, so useful. The PassMed question bank is pretty good. We also here at Edinburgh use something called Peerwise, where our peers make questions. So I used a bit of that as well. Also, the university gave us some really useful quizzes to do um, and that gave me a good idea of the sort of knowledge level that's expected of me for my exams at my university. So definitely look out for these things at your university as well. But um, other resources that I used was Anki. Now, Anki can be a bit hit or miss. In the past, I've used it, left it. I've liked it, not liked it. I think Anki, it's the sort of thing that making the flashcards is a bit time consuming, so you have to make sure that you make them at an appropriate time that's not too close to exam season. But then actually to use the card that you make as well, a lot of people will just make the cards and they'll just sit there. That's not useful, but Anki was a pretty good way, I think, for me, uh, for the four main specialties. So cardio, neuro, resp, and GI, I made Anki Dex 4, covering all the main learning outcomes that I needed to know. I think Anki was quite a good thing to do on the go, so like on the bus or like just like on and off. Um, it was a good thing to just keep going over in my uh, spare time. My focused revision was definitely through PassMed though, and that was the main resource that I used. Now, of course, I wasn't taking all of these in-depth notes uh, on my Notion anymore. However, what I did feel there was a need for and something I couldn't fully grasp on PassMed was some summary notes. And you know, I love making these summary posters back in year one and two. I used to do them handwritten and they looked a lot nicer and more aesthetic. They made me want to study them. 
Year four, I didn't have quite as much time to do all the, that handwritten summary mind map stuff. However, I did uh, just on a simple Word document make some summaries for some of the key conditions that I needed to know quite a lot about. So things like asthma, meningitis, um, even things that I found difficult to differentiate. So things like acute cholecystitis um, and like things like um, ascending cholangitis and biliary colic. Those sort of conditions where there can be an overlap of symptoms and management, um, I made tables for that. I think tables are a great way to um, get your information down on one page. Um, also for infectious disease, I found that that worked quite well, just having the investigations and the management for each of the infectious diseases that we needed to know. Because again, antibiotics and that sort of infectious disease management is something I find quite tricky. So I decided to make a table for it. For me as a visual learner, seeing that information spread out on a piece of pa paper was really useful because sometimes even on PassMed you have to jump between pages and it can become confusing. So although there was no in-depth notes, there was certainly some summary notes that I'll definitely be referring to, I'm sure, even past my degree as well. So all in all, I'm not saying that notes are a horrible thing to do, however, for me, at my clinical years of medical school now, I think that it's just not worth it anymore. Other than the summary notes I've spoken about, I think that medical school revision has to be a lot more active. It has to be quite proactive actually. You need to be in that studying mindset. Having goals really helps to motivate you and keep you on track especially because university is so much more self-directed. Um, it's important that you are covering things when you should be covering them and leaving enough time for you to go over things again. You know, um, if it wasn't for these goals, I might not have finished the course in February. It might have taken me a lot longer and then actually delayed that revision process. End of the day with medical school, because there's so much information that you have to just know, um, a lot of it does become memorization. However, what I have felt is that the more stuff you memorize, the better links you are able to make when you're learning other things. It's a bit of a confusing thing, maybe, um, I, maybe I'm not able to put it into words properly, but um, it does help you and, uh, it help when, and when you start making those links, you become a better learner and it helps things to become easier to understand. So I hope that made sense and it gives you a bit of an update. Um, obviously I made this video uh, you know, I started, I stopped taking notes like maybe five months ago, but I wanted to give myself that time to actually trial this method and actually, um, you know, see if it would give me any success or not. And obviously I have now passed my fourth year, I did much better in my second formative as well. So I felt that this method is working and it's something important for me to share with you guys. Um, so I hope this has helped. Uh, do feel free to use some of these resources that I've spoken about today. I think they're really good and if I do make more changes, although it can be scary to make these changes, I will definitely keep you guys updated. Let me know what method you use down in the comments and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye.